Hello right bags, it's Jay Plays Games back again with another Ark Survival Vol tutorial video. Today's a very special video guys. We are going to be looking at what I have my server on. If you don't know, I've been playing my single player. I've been getting out of the videos not as much as I'd like, but I've been doing a single player world and it is one that just rocketed. The first video of that has got 284,000 views. So thank you if you've been staying tuned. I know so many of you want to see more Let's Plays. I've got things in hand. I'm going to be doing Season 2 coming up. But, Season 1 is finished, practically. I just want to show you guys exactly what I actually use for my server. Because so many of you kept asking, how do you boost your server? And that's what I do. I boost my server, guys. So, if you don't want to know how to boost your server, if you think it's cheating, or if you don't like the way people do that, then you know what, jog on. Literally, just click off the video, it's fine. If you do want to know how to boost your server, if you do want to know how I boost my server, then stay tuned, we're going to go through all the settings. So obviously I've been playing on the arc, that's simple, that's pretty bog standard. I'm going to straight away put the difficulty level up to 1. They have added the maximum difficulty now, so you don't technically have to do that, but I still do it, it's out of habit. The maximum difficulty, if you click that, that will now make all the dinos guaranteed to be level 150. Where previously the highest you could find some dinos was 120, so you've got greater chance of finding dinos now at 150 on any map. Now a few things that you might not need to bother about if you're playing single player, but occasionally I have subs come on, is I enable global voice chat so everyone can hear each other on the server. And I don't turn on proximity chat, I like it so that everyone can hear talk to each other. I put notify player left and join, simple stuff, admin login. Now once you've activated cheats once by having admin login on and doing a cheat, you don't need to keep this on. The game or map remembers that you've had cheats on it before. So you can go ahead and turn this off and you'll still be able to do cheat commands on your single player world once you've done it once. Enable crosshairs, yeah we want that. We're going to leave the full snow HUD. We want our loot crates and we want allow third person camera. Now on the Xbox at the moment this option isn't here, it's only on the PS4 as far as I know, um, hopefully it'll be coming and same for dedicated consoles, you may not be able to use third person on a dedicated console. Next up, obviously we don't have hardcore mode, we have PvE mode because I don't want any of my subs accidentally shooting me. And then we've got disable friendly fire, I don't want to harm any of my dinosaurs, killing them using whatever weapons I've got. Show map player location, yeah, we'll do that because it's my single player world. We leave all of these on because obviously I might want to download some stuff. Although be warned, if you're playing with players that you don't really know and you're near an obelisk, they could technically download some creatures and they may be trolls. They may download all sorts of stuff and just unleash it on you. So be careful with that one. Right, now on to the nitty gritty, what you really want to know. We're talking about the stats. This is what makes my game more enjoyable for me. It's all about how you want to play your game. Don't let anyone ever tell you how to play your game. They can suggest stuff like I'm doing now, but don't let anyone say to you you're cheating, it's not right, or you know, you, you've got it too hard. If you like playing art, you like playing it a certain way, this is what these sliders are for on single player. If you want to play the same way as every other sheep on Ark, then go ahead and go and play on the official servers. But if you're looking to have some fun and you want to play on your own or just your pals or on a dedicated server, this is what you need to do. I leave dino damage as it is, I leave player damage as it is. I turn structure damage down as I don't want any traps or things accidentally hurting anyone. I put player resistance down as well so that I'm harder to kill. I leave it there at 0.55. I put dino resistance up a little bit so it's easier to kill them. I put structure resistance all the way to the left, so that's 0.0. .0. That means my buildings can't get destroyed by dinosaurs or other players. Remember, this is a single player game, so I can do this. I don't have to worry about other players accidentally trolling me or trolling me on purpose. Now, XP multiplier. Previously, Ark had it very set at what multipliers there were. They changed multipliers on official servers a while ago. They have added this rate in themselves, you don't need to change anything, but they have increased how much XP you get and a lot of the other sliders. But I still go ahead and I have this boosted up to 3.
at the very beginning of my let's play I did boost it up a little bit more than that I think it was at four or five because I really wanted to unlock lots of engrams quickly to show you guys stuff and just have a bit of fun taming speed don't be messing around just turning this right you need to put in some serious numbers if you want to tame dinosaurs as quick as me I have it at 15 now that may seem ultra quick I am not here for the grind guys, with all the videos I do, all the content I do, there's no way I can wait around for 6 hours, 12 hours taming a dinosaur. At 15 it usually means you can find like a level 150 dinosaur and it may take 5 minutes to tame. Any lower dinosaurs should be tamed within like 2 minutes, 3 minutes max. If it's a low level you'll instantly tame them. Again, it's the way I like playing. In case there is something wrong with the structures or maybe I need to replace something, it, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to put it down to zero anyway. Dino turret damage, I leave exactly how it is. Dino harvesting damage, I actually increase. I have this up to six. Harvest amount, I make this a lot bigger, guys. I'm going to put this up to six as well. Now previously, if I've done a build video where I'm getting lots of materials and I'm building something on my base, I will put that up to 10. But on an average rule of thumb sort of let's play video, I only have it on a 6.0. Play a water drain. You know what? I don't like mucking around with water. I am one of them guys. So I always decrease that to about 0.55. Same thing goes for food. Now dino character food drain you cannot decrease because if you decrease it it means your dinosaurs won't eat so you won't be able to tame anything. Or it will take even longer to tame. So this one is the one that I turn right up. This means the taming speed will increase even quicker because dinosaurs will be eating quicker. So generally I'll leave it around 2.55. Stamina I reduce a little bit again to 0.55 which means I can run longer. And the same thing for my characters, my dinos stamina, I put that to 0.55. I put my player health recovery all the way up to 3.0. This means I'll recover my health quicker and I'll do the same thing for my dinosaurs. Now, you're thinking this is too easy. It's not, guys. Have you seen how many times I die in my Let's Play? Go and check out how many times. It must be at least 50. Player harvesting damage. Again, I have this boosted all the way up. And I actually normally put it up to the 6 like that. Rules. Now rules is a little bit, you don't, you know, ignore most of this. What I will put on is PV allow tribe war cancel in case any of my subs accidentally declare war. Allow fly carry PVE. This is really important. Obviously, I want to be able to pick creatures up with my RGs or my Quetzes, so you make sure you can tick that on. And if you don't want your bases becoming able to be claimed by anyone else, you would tick that as well. I do tick that even though there's no one else building on my single player world. It's just something out of habit from having a dedicated server in the past. Same thing for Dino Decay, I'll leave that. Although they're looking in the future to make it that your dinosaurs will actually not be unclaimable. If that makes sense. So when your dinosaurs run out of their time, if you haven't been on the server in a while, instead of them just being available for anyone to come and claim, they'll actually just be turned loose. I don't put on enable extra structure volumes. I want to be able to build and grab stuff from the bases. That's why I can build in like areas where there's lots of high resources. I leave diseases on, I leave all of this on, force allow cave flyers, yes we want to be able to take our birds and our creatures into the caves and fly with them, I like doing that so I'm ticking that on. And override structure platform prevention, this is so that you can build bigger structures on platforms, so tick that on too. World. I don't like the night time, so I put the day cycle speed to 0.4, I put the daytime speed to 0.4, this slows it down so there's more daytime, and I put the nighttime speed all the way up to around 2.5. Spoiling time, I do increase the spoiling time, I'm going to have it around 2.4. Item decomposition time, exactly the same one. This just gives it a little bit longer than normal for things to decompose. 
reports decomposition time. Again, I'll leave that at 1.5. No resource radius players. Now, I will decrease this a little bit so that things can grow closer to players and bases so I don't have to keep going miles for resources. And the same thing goes with no resource radius structures. Crop growth speed. Oh my gosh. Yes, we're putting that up. I want that up higher. I want my crops to go higher so I can make loads of kibble. Crop decay speed. Again, we want that low. I'll leave it at 0.3 so my crops don't just like die on me when I'm, I haven't been there to go and collect the stuff. Baby imprinting still broke a little bit so I don't touch that. Poop interval, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm doing a bit of farming, I will turn it down, I do believe. That makes it quicker. Otherwise, if you want to increase it, I do turn it up. Bear with me on that. It's been a while since I've done that, but I think that's the one. Late egg interval, I turn that right down to 0.1. In fact, you might need to type it in. Now, I could just do it at zero, but I, I feel like it might break the game sometimes, or it doesn't work necessarily if you put them all the way to zero. Mate and interval, again, I'll have that really low, 0.1. Egg hatch speed, I want that sped up. Baby mature speed, I want that sped up. I'm not interested in mucking around with babies. I want them to be quick. Baby food consumption speed, again, we'll increase that and that will make them grow up even quicker. Harvest health, we want that turned down. This means that the plants and rocks that you're hitting won't take too many hits before you can get all the resources. So that's why you see in my Let's Play that I generally hit something once, maybe twice, and I'll get all the resources from it. Resource respawn period. If I want resources to respawn quicker, I will reduce it down that way. But don't do it too much because you'll have trees and rocks popping up right in your base or right next to your base all the time. You want to leave it about there. Again, the baby cuddle stuff I don't really touch because as far as I'm aware, it's a little bit buggy and I've never really played around with it. Stats. Now, stats, believe it or not, there's not much a change here other than weight. In all the dino ones, I put it up by 500 each one. This means that all my dinosaurs are beasts when it comes to carrying stuff. I'm not playing Skyrim. I don't want to waste half an hour in infantry management deciding what I need. Especially when I want lots of resources or I'm doing something. So I put all of these ones up. That's why when you see me level up weight in the Let's Play, it will jump from something like 1,000 to like 4,000. And there you go, I'll leave them all at 500. I don't touch any of the other stats. I'll leave all the other dino stats as it is to make the game fairly normal in terms of they can kill me. Allow custom recipes, I'll leave that on so I can make my own food and it'll give me buffs. I increase the effectiveness of it though, so that whenever I do eat these things they'll give me more stamina or more hunger etc. And I'll put the custom skill factor, I do believe you put that down. And that makes it so that you can basically, anyone can make something really cool. Flyer platform unaligned basin, I cannot correct me if I'm wrong. thousands of stuff why is my weight so high I put it up to 5,000 I know that seems like a lot guys but I don't want to muck around playing a game and worrying about stone if you do you like the realistic nature of it you might like it really hardcore and that's totally cool but for me I just want to hit a rock get loads of rock take rock back to base and build with rock I do put the speed up slightly so that I can just get a bit more you know going around and I do put the temperature fortitude up, so that means that I'm not affected as much by cold or heat. Now for the XP multipliers in general. So for generic things, I actually increase it. I have it normally at 1.9. For kills, I have it at 1.9. For harvesting, I have it at 1.9. For crafting, I have it at 1.9. And for specials, I actually increase it massively. I go to 3 something normally. I'll do it at 3.0. So any special things you do, I do believe if it's killing like alphas or bosses, you'll get even more XP. And that is pretty much it, guys. That is what my world is. Fairly simple. There's reasons why, like I said, I hopefully I've explained why I have some of these up. Please do correct me if I've said one of these wrong. Like I said, I've done lots of guides on these, but even I forget what they will do sometimes. 
And that is it, I just load up my single player and that's my world ready to go. And here we are, we're in my single player world. Now a couple things, previously in the game it can be really really buggy sometimes. Especially when you're mucking around with motion blur and stuff like that. So whenever you load up your menu, click the motion blur on and off, click apply and save and exit. This kind of resets things. I forget to do this sometimes and what happens is that's why you see motion blur on some of my videos and some of the videos you don't. Because it used to reset every time you loaded into the world. It might not do that now but I still do that. And the same thing with detail graphics. Do the same thing. Click it on and off. Click apply and save and exit. So there you go guys, that is my server settings. So many of you have asked for that in the past. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to get it to you guys. It's just been one of them things that I've never got around to doing. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed season one of my Let's Play. If you haven't watched it at all, go and check it out and then you can decide if my settings really matched what it was. You can disagree. Please go ahead and disagree. Just keep it clean. Tell me why I shouldn't have some of them settings like that. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it, whether or not you agree with some of them. I'll be back for season two of Ark Let's Play. We're going to be chatting very different guys. Well, not different, but it's going to be a little bit, a little bit more structured. It's going to be a little bit more focused on one specific aspect of Ark, hunting. So stay tuned for that. I'm Jay Plays Games. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit the like button and the subscription button, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.